Those vegan guys. I thank you. Hiya, I'm Paul. I'm Jason. And <laughs> together we are Those, Those Vegan, vegan guys. guys. Sorry about that, oh, my daft idea just felt like doing something silly. We're gonna make mince pies. I'll tell you why. I bought this from Sainsbury's not too long ago. Please show it, Beryl. Oh, we're back to the good old days where Polly can't focus. There, there we go. go. So it's fully marked vegan, as you can see there. And it is maple and pecan. Taste the difference, mincemeat. Rich and indulgent. Who don't want that in the garb at Christmas? Do you know what I mean? So, I'm a little bit concerned because I've got this, which is really not very deep. Okay. Right, but then I've got the one that I would normally do with the mini quiches in, the silicone one. And that's quite deep. And I don't know which one to use. See, look how deep that is. That's too deep. Do you think? Oh, I don't know. It depends, it depends. Do you want a mince pie with, a, with, with an ample filling? Well, they're meant to be little and dainty little things, aren't they? Anyway, we're waffling on. We should, this is a conversation we should have had before we started filming. But no, not those vegan guys. Down to worth veganism on the reg, which is real life here in our kitchen in Oldham. <laughs> but we are going to make mince pies and we're going to do the pastry from scratch. Yes. We're going to show you how easy it is. Um, and then we'll probably have a snaffle on one uh, when they're done at the end. Oh, I should hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people make their own mincemeat, but when you can grab a jar for one pound, 80 I think. But it is taste the difference. The basic one was 150, one pound. Uh, anyway, right, let's get down to it. Mince pies! Homemade, don't you know? Not bloody healthy though. Just so you know, because I'm not going to lie, I'm winging this. Uh, and I'm hoping it works out. Uh, your standard short crust, crust pastry, as most people will tell you, is usually half fat to flour. So if you used 250 grams of flour, you would use 125 grams of fat. Whatever fat that may be. So, I'm gonna, I've already got my bowl on my scale. Did you know you can do that and then start it and it starts at zero? Someone had to tell me. <laughs> and then I knew. Right, I'm gonna start with 200 grams. No, I'm gonna go to 20, actually. There we go, perfect. 220 grams of plain flour. 220 grams of plain flour. Then, I'm gonna turn my scales off. Start them again. And they'll start at zero. So I can just add all the ingredients to the same bowl. Please somebody tell me that's been a revelation to you like it was to me when somebody told me. Or was I just sick? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Right. 35, I'm going for 100 grams of fat. Slightly less than half, I know, but I'm going to be putting caster sugar in this as well because it's a sweet pastry we want. Ah, 105, 105. Let's see if it works out. Now, a very, um, turn it off and on again. I'm gonna go for 60 grams of caster sugar. And that should hopefully be plenty. Nice. 65. Can't take it out now. So 65 grams of caster sugar. 220 plain flour, 100, oh, I'm using that by the way, maturely vegan spreadable. Uh, and now it's a case of getting your fingers in there and doing the crummy thing, just rubbing it all together until it forms like breadcrumbs. So we'll be back in a minute. Right, I've got my crumbly texture as uh, desired. Uh, <clears throat> at that point right now, you could whack that on a load of fruit and it would make a great fruit crumble at that exact point. 
watch for an upcoming recipe on this channel that I've just come up with in my head and I'm marking it now. It's my recipe. <laughs> mm. Cauliflower cheese crumble with a savoury herby crumble on top. You want it, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> Um, just a, about a teaspoon or maybe just less of salt. It's always important in pastries. It's part of the chemical um, magic of baking. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the fridge for about just about 20 minutes just to let it go cold because the only other ingredient we're going to add is water. Cold water, very cold water just a bit at a time until it forms into a dough. Uh, but we'll get it in the fridge first and then we'll come back and do that. Hello. We're back from the fridge times. Hi. Hiya. <laughs> it's out of the fridge, still nice and crumbly. Basically, we're just adding uh, little bits of water at a time. I'm gonna start off with three actually. Little bits of water at a time. You can use a spoon if you want. Just start mixing it through. But the order of the game now is to get this worked into a dough that we, the, we can then actually roll out on the counter. Really cold water. Um, no point in watching us do this. We'll see you when it's on the counter and we can roll it out. rolled into a nice dough now but it's a little bit sticky I might have added too much water so be slower with your water I'm just going to add a little just a little smidge a smidge more flour and uh, get it worked into a, a workable dough I mean it is now it's just a little bit sticky but that's it I mean that's a good thing for short crust pastry though and I think in particular a sweet one um, I'll get me, me I'll get my surface floured. I'll see how it's all coming away from the sides now. Mm. See. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty much ready for rolling. So I've got my door on the uh, work surface now and I'm just going to Roll it out nice and thin, and then we'll use our cutter to cut into, we've decided to go with the smaller uh, tray. I don't think, because of the amount of butter that's in the pastry, Jace, mm -hmm. I don't think I have to oil the, the tray, necessarily. No? No, I don't think so. Right, we'll get these cut out and in there, and then we'll pop our mince meat in. Right, got my pastry in my little tray. Got my jar of mincemeat. Oh, I've got buttery hands, Jason. Got right buttery hands, I have. Oh, they're full of butter. You know, with the day Christmas. Butter all over it. Sorry. Even I struggled with my special man strength. Mm, right, I don't know really how much of this to put in. You know. Can I suggest putting in an amount that is appropriate for the case that you've created. Like a tart. Like a minced tart. Ooh, watch it. It's only because I'm studying. Well, well, I don't, I know I don't, but that's what I'm saying, I don't know how much. Let's see, a teaspoon. That looks good. Yeah, actually it does, doesn't it? It smells like gorgeous minced meat this maple and pecan so this is a good exercise I'll show up in a minute so we can speed up 
this is a good exercise in how much does one of these how long does one of these jars last mm -hmm. let's see I'll be quiet now Twelve is about two thirds of the can. Can? Jar. So you might be able to get twenty at a push. Twenty small ones. Mm -hmm. And what I've done here is I've got the smaller one out. So that was the one I used to cut out the original. I've got the smaller one out now. And I think we'll see that they will make the perfect lids. Do you not need to use anything to attach the lid to the body? Well, I can just kind of press with my fingers like that, which is what most people would do anyway. Okay, but I know nothing. No, I could, yeah, I can just pinch it like that. Cool. I'm sure some people would be like, you should have used milk to seal it, you silly, silly boy. And to those people I say, I'm not you, Margaret. I'm Paul from Oldham. Let me be. Let me learn in my own way. Love you, though, and all that you stand for. Maybe I won't have enough for lids for all of them, and I think I'm gonna to have to stab the tops, Jason. You know. Yeah. You know, like you would a little pie or something. Mhm. Mm uh, and jab it. Ideally, really, icing sugar would be the finishing point kind of when they're done but we haven't got any really mm -hmm. no i don't use it a lot do i don't ice things a lot me i've got a warm heart i'm not icy <laughs> so i did that <laughs> in my book you can't have a mince pie with a bit without a bit of ice and sugar sprinkled on it well i'll sprinkle some caster sugar on on the top of these before we bake them mm -hmm. and then they might have a nice little crispy you know i'm trying to just seal these with my finger because you've made me paranoid now and margaret's made me paranoid whoever she is the character i just came up with well, that should be fine they're, they're quite sealed right i'll get on with the rest of them and uh, and we'll get them in the oven it's preheating now to 180 um, so I'll get them in as soon as they're done and I'll let you know I'm do all I'm going to do with the tops literally is just put two stab marks in just so that there's a bit of air that's all two like that so I'll see you uh, when they come out of the oven and I'll tell you how long they took 180 fan oven So there you go, if that was 20 minutes of 180 in the oven and I know that Jason will have lovingly put all the measurements we used in text on the screen while I was doing it so that you can work out how to do the pastry and you've just had the lovely close up of the one that we're about to snaffle. If you could smell it in here, it smells delightful. I know people always say that but it really does smell delightful. It's worth spending an extra little bit of money if you're going to buy a pre-made to go in there. Ready? Yeah, should we do a thumbnail first? Go on. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Who Indul knows? Indulge us, thank you. Right, ready? Yeah. Because this is more a test on the pastry. The mincemeat's going to be fine. It's, you know. True. Mmm. Oh. I love it. Mm. Mm. Not too sweet. Mm. Crumbly. It's like a mince pie pastry. I might have rolled it a little bit thick. 
That's fair, but I like that. To be honest with you. Mm. Mm. It's a bit more substantial considering it's so small. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh. And finishing it off with a bit of icing sugar on top, that'd be absolutely perfect. That's great pastry and I've winged that. It's all this confidence I'm getting in the kitchen these days. I think I'm more confident in the kitchen now than I've ever been before in my life. I think you clearly demonstrated how easy it is to whack up a bit of sweet pastry and knock up some uh, some fantastic mince pies. Once again, mm. Christmas in me gob. That mince meat from Sainsbury's maple and pecan. Mm. That's, That's good stuff. Isn't it? You'll have to talk for a minute. Mm. Fantastic mince pies. However, if you're watching this before Sunday the 20th of December, if you want to see, some might describe an expert in the kitchen making exquisite mince pies that are worthy of any Christmas table, then join us on Sunday the 20th of December um, for cooking in the kitchen with those vegan guys. And what you'll need for this lesson in culinary expertise and making everything by hand is one ready rolled puff pastry sheet that you buy at the supermarket, one ready rolled pack of phyllo pastry that you buy at the supermarket, oh, yeah. and a jar of minced meat. That's essentially what you'll need. And um, but as will all be revealed on Sunday the 20th of December at 3 o'clock. Cooking skills. Uh, it's all in the, uh, it's how you bring those things together. Absolutely. And how you present them. Mm -hmm. It's how you emulate Jamie Oliver. But anyway, without giving any more away, um, this has been a great success, they're beautiful. Yeah, um, so as this is a festive vlogmas, let me just whack our meatless feast festive plat up there. Uh, because if you're still struggling for something for your Christmas dinner, it's a perfect recipe. It's all bought from the supermarket. You whack it together, put it in the oven. It tastes great for Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Within that video, you'll there's a link to our original festive plat, which is a little bit more complex. A little bit, yeah. Uh, but again, beautiful. And I will also whack the, the link up there to our homemade Baileys, uh, which we've got about. Oh. We've got that much left of. So I'm going to have to make another batch for Christmas, but I wanted to do that video so that you guys knew how to make your own Baileys for Christmas because it's really easy and it's delicious. And you put if you want to try it with cocoa powder and vanilla essence instead of the coffee, do that. Mm -hmm. You want to add more or less whiskey, do that. Really adaptable recipe. Anyway, cheers guys for joining us. Um, oh, happy Christmas. Yeah, happy Christmas. Happy Christmas everyone. I hope you have a bash at making your own uh, pastry and your own mince pies because then you can set it Ethel next door who's always scowling at you. I made those Ethel with my own lily white hands. Judging me now, are you? Thank you <laughs> for taking the time uh, to watch this vlog. Um, even I think I could manage that um, that pastry, to be honest. I really do. Um, but uh, give us a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. If you're here watching us and you're watching us on the reg, we put content out on the reg. How come you've not subscribed already? We'd love it if you did. Thank Don't forget you. to download our free ebook uh, down there. Over the next, before Christmas, I'm going to be updating it, adding a few more pages, a few more recipes, and getting it ready to for, to help people in Veganuary. But it's a good book now, and mm -hmm. it's free, so please download it and have a look. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Mr. Bromley, I bloody love you. Bloody love you too. <laughs> bloody love you lot. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon, and until then, please be excellent. Oh, I tried. Do it again. Please be excellent to yourselves and each other. See what I was trying to do? I was trying to mix elf and excellent. And... It's ruined this! <laughs> <laughs>